Tell me about this place. It's a garden. It's a garden. Beautiful. Describe this garden for me. Beautiful roses. Mm -hmm. What color are the roses? Red, those? pink, yellow. Mm -hmm. There's a bench. Like a like a concrete or marble bench. Mm -hmm. Grass. So tell me about this garden. What do you love about it so much? It's peaceful. Mm -hmm. What do you think could happen on that bench? A place to sit mm -hmm. and well, rest. Okay, so why don't we have a seat on that bench? And I'd like for you now to look for someone in that garden that will come and sit with you. It could be any shape, any color, it could be a person or a thing. Tell me what you see. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Very good. So describe Jesus for me. What's he, what's he look like today? Spirit. Mm -hmm. A light. Spirit. Spirit of light? Uh, yes, light. Mm -hmm. So ask Jesus to sit next to you on the bench. Jesus, please sit with me here in the garden. Tell me what he says. Always. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what Jesus has to tell you today. What's he doing there in the garden with you? What does he want to tell you? He's sitting there. Why, why don't I come more? Mm -hmm. More often. What do you tell him? I want to come, but I'm so busy. What does he say to you about that? It's, it's a place of rest. And I can just come briefly at any time of the day and find him waiting there. He's always there, waiting. Mm -hmm. He's always available. So is Jesus available today to ask, to answer some of your questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's ask Jesus some of the questions that you brought here today. We want to find out what your purpose is. What did you sign up for in this time? He said, I sent you here to be a light among the dark. Is Lenise fulfilling that purpose? Yes. Mm -hmm. You are so brave. So, so faithful. So why did Lenise choose such a difficult job? The job chose her. Mm. Because she was strong and fearless mm -hmm. with the energy of Michael. So they're working together? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. She comes in with the force of Michael. 
and many other angels. Who were the other angels helping Lenise? Uriel, mm -hmm. Jack Wheel, mm -hmm. Raphael, Gabriel, Haniel, mm -hmm. many angels. Mm -hmm. She battles many, many dark forces all the time. How is she battling them? Is she affecting them? You said she's here to be the light, but how does she affect these people who are in such darkness? Just by shining. Mm -hmm. That is the battle. To shine. To shine. To keep shining. That's the battle. Mm -hmm. So we really do, don't need to do much except be the light where there's darkness. Yes. Mm -hmm. We just have to be. We don't have to do. Just be. Mm -hmm. She was asking about this place where she's working at right now. Should she be leaving that place? Is she done there or does she need more? No. They need her so much. They wait for her. They pray for her. They pray that she doesn't leave. They, they, they wait for her. They need her energy. Her energy, it balances the negativity. Just one, her one, her energy alone, it, it balances out the negativity. Mm-hmm. Well, she's dealing with pretty heavy-duty darkness there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Why is it that she always seems to be struggling, though. She seems to make money, but it just leaves her. She... She doesn't really put importance on money. Mm. She doesn't care about money. She doesn't value money. So she doesn't keep money. So if she doesn't value it, it won't value her? Yes. And besides, she knows that there's more important things than money. Mm -hmm. She would like to have the finer things in life and do lots of things, but she knows her mission and she knows what she has to do. And she agrees with what has to be done. Mm -hmm. And she has everything she wants. We give her everything she wants. Everything that she's written down, we've given. And everything that she has written down, if she doesn't have it, it's on the way. Mm. Is she going to be moving out of L.A.? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But how can she move out of L.A. and still be the beacon of light in the place where she works? In time. Okay. She'll know when it's the right time. You'll tell her about that? Yes, she'll feel it. She'll feel an urgency to go. Mm -hmm. And the path will be clear. And she will know that which way to go. She will know when to go. And she will know where to go. We'll lead her as we always do. Why did she choose such a difficult path? She chose a difficult path because she's strong. She knew before she came here that it would be difficult, but she agreed and she accepted. Now that she's here, she's forgotten and she gets discouraged, mm -hmm. but she just has to know that she's doing everything according to her plan and it's good. She's doing well. But she wants to be on Easy Street. And she will be on Easy Street. Everything she has asked for, she will attain. She will have. 
she has been given a perpetual yes. She has an open door because she has been faithful to her plan. Hmm. She could have given up. She was given a doorway to exit this life. She did not take the exit. And she has an open door. She can do, she can do so much more. She, she, she can do whatever she puts her mind to, but she has to remember, she has to remember that love always has to be the focus. Mm -hmm. And she has to shine her light and she has to bring that positive energy to those who are in the dark. And she does this everywhere she goes. No matter what she's doing. No matter what she's doing, even when she thinks she's being negative, she's still shining her light because she cannot veer too far off the path. Mm. What happens if she veers off the path? She'll know it because she'll start to get sick. She'll start to get aches in the body. Mm. She'll start to get overstressed. And then she knows that that's the trigger to come back. Come back to the focus of what must be done. Come back to the heart of the plan, which is to spread the light. Being an artist, was that ever part of the plan? Yes. What At happened? her core, she is motivated and moved by all things beautiful. She loves crystals. She loves all things beautiful of nature. She's in awe. She'll stop and watch a tree, and that tree will be as if it's talking to her. And she loves the flowers. She takes time to stop and look at flowers, even while she's driving to work in the car. She's motivated by beauty. And we've given her talent. She was born with a natural talent to do all things artistic, almost. But she doesn't believe she has talent. So how can we prove it to her that she has talent? Well, she knows she has talent. Mm -hmm. Deep down inside, she has to go within. She has to sit with herself and be still and drown out the distractions. And then when she can listen, she'll know that she can, she can do whatever she wants with creativity. But the whole focus that she has is how can she make money from it? She wants to be able to be on QVC one day. Yes. Yes, I know. It always comes back to the money. Uh-huh. If she wanted to be on QVC, if she really wanted to make a product or design clothes she loves to do, mm -hmm. she can do it. She can be successful. I've told her so many times there is a perpetual open door you can walk through it at any time to your success my will is for my children to prosper never to be in lack and never to be in want but first it starts with the mind with the thoughts is there lack in your mind is there lack in your heart to this, this thing and always know that abundance abundance is God's will for you never lack don't look to lack always be aware of the abundance that's available at any moment it's open to you whatever is in your heart if there's a leaning if there's something in your heart that you feel you should do that you love to do, do it. Don't think about the money. 
Don't even think about that you have to do it all the time. You have to make a living with it. Start small. Do what brings you joy. Find time to have joy. And if something that you do, such as art, creating, writing, something that's in your heart or your mind to do that brings you joy, make sure you take time to do it. Take time to do it. That's what's important. Make sure you're pursuing what brings you joy, what brings you bliss. And that way, you'll lighten your burden, and then you'll lighten the burden and the load of those around you. Because once you give yourself permission, permission to pursue your bliss, others will see, and then they'll follow theirs and then you'll make things much better for everyone. So you're actually being like the uh, the example of what others should be. Just yeah. be joyful. Yes, why not? Why not follow your bliss? That's another thing she was put here for. To show people that it's possible to enjoy and follow bliss. Now she's not going to think that she's doing that, but others see that she's following bliss by the way that she she has she finds bliss in smiling. Mm -hmm. She finds bliss in 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 going to uh, the the dollar store and getting gifts for her, for her, her uh, patients. Mm -hmm. She finds bliss in the little things in nature. And she's always telling people, she's always trying to turn people's eyes back to bliss, to happiness, to joy, to the things that make people happy, to focus on what brings you happiness. Don't think about what's going bad, what you don't like, what's not going good. Keep your focus on those things that cause bliss, that lead to bliss, that lead to joy. When a person lives in bliss, how does that change their life? It changes their life because their life is like heaven on earth. Their life becomes lighter. Oh, they'll have problems. They'll still have bills. They'll still have worries, but life won't be the, the tormenting hell that it is for most because you'll have a, a peace, you'll have a, a happiness that, that that sorrow can't touch because you're, you're, you're one with, with the Father, you're, you're one with, with truth, which is love, bliss, happiness, peace. That's your truth. All this other stuff, that's, that's, that's just the lie. It's the illusion. Let it go. Come back to the truth of what you are, what's so available to you. And it all it takes is a shift in perception. Just so easy, but so difficult for some. I would that you would have the bliss I said it before. I've overcome the world, so cheer up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell her a little bit about these dreams that she's been having? Yes. Why, why is she being shown so many strange dreams? She wants to know. She has asked to know. It has been given for her to know. Mm -hmm. She's a seeker of the mysteries. And she wants to know everything. Mm -hmm. And she does know in truth. You all know. But, you know, we forget. Why, are, why do we come here with no knowledge, no memory? 
of this truth. Ah, but you do remember, and you do have knowledge, and you do have the truth. But it's the game. It's, it's very complicated. But you have to shut off a certain part of knowledge so that you can operate here in this reality. Hmm. If you retain all of the knowledge and all the, the wisdom that you have, you wouldn't be able to, uh, to, uh, well, for one thing, you go crazy probably at putting all that into to this dimension, into this time. To, well, it's too complicated. So, as always, everything is happening for your highest good. So when you come here, it's like you leave all the knowledge and everything outside and you come and get into this vehicle. And you go around, do what you have to do. You pay the light bill, the gas bill, whatever. But in truth, you already know everything. You have the knowledge, you, you know everything, you know the past, you know the present, you know the future, you know it all. But you play the game as if you know nothing. Why do we have this game? People are tired of this game, they want to go home. Why have we come to play this game? You played this game for a very good reason. You love the game. <laughs> You love it, you love it, you love it. You love the pain, you love the suffering, you love the joy, you love the peace. You love the fighting, you love the killing, you love the money, you love it all. And that's the truth. You love it. And it is just like a game. It's just like a game. But, Oh, everybody thinks of it. It's oh, you're taking the fun out of it because you're so worried and stressed and you're fighting and hating, but I guess that's all a part of the fun. But... Well, some people may hear that and say, I don't like this fun. I want to go home. I'm tired of it. And I would say... In a moment's notice, when you sincerely say, with all of the strength that you have and all of your conviction, that I am going to change. I am going to change my financial situation. I'm going to focus. I'm going to put my attention on it. I'm going to put my time on it. And you put your intention and everything on it. It will change in an instant. And matter of fact, you don't even have to do anything. You just be the intention. Be what you want to do. Be what you want to have. You don't even have to do it. Just be it. Know it in your heart. Know that the Father's will is for you to be in joy. For you to have whatever it is that will bring you joy and bliss that is in line with love. Just know that if it's in line with love and that you know that it's in line with the Father's will then. And besides, God wants you to be. He wants you to be. He wants you to be. And in that being, He wants you to be everything that you're supposed to be, that you are, that you have in your heart, that he placed in your heart, he placed desires there, but you push those desires to the side, you call them selfish, you say it's, oh, it's just me, and I just, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm bad for wanting this, I'm, I'm selfish because I want to live in a nice house. I'm, I'm, I'm selfish because I want, I don't, no, that's the Father. He's placed in your heart the wish for more because He wants to give you more. He wants you to turn your focus off the 
the fighting and the the anger and the this and the that and to put it on back on the bliss put it back on the love put it back on the joy so that you can have more things to be blissful about you can have more things to be joyful about have more things to love but when you get sidetracked and you let your predominant thoughts lean towards the sadness the sorrow the the the, the let down of of, of who, who made you mad who didn't do everything the right way as you thought it should be then you don't you you, you get out of line as some would say you, you you're not lined up with the father his highest will mm-hmm. but you don't don't feel bad it's all part of the game and it's all a lovely lovely game because in the end you'll still be you there's no way you can lose this game that's why I like it and that's why you like it because there's no way you can win there's no way you can lose I mean you can only win deep down inside everybody knows this that's why they play and they play over and over and over again you you pass from the body you pass from life and you come right back because you love this game what happens when we pass where do we go I've seen different scenes when you meet up with other beings what happens after that yes after you pass there's many places you can go and you do go you will go to a place that is aligned with your predominant energy energy pattern mm-hmm. so if before you passed you were a very angry person you will go to the place of anger well not so much anger but you'll go to the place where you can learn about anger or you'll have time to reflect on the outcome of anger what happened uh, who you hurt with anger you'll go to a place where you can learn about the effects of anger and how that you can transcend that energy the next time so it's like a school absolutely mm-hmm. well what happens with those souls that get trapped that don't go I find a lot of energies that are still trapped on this dimension that haven't found their way back home they're fear based mm-hmm. full of fear and they don't want to go because of the fear and they think that it's not going to be right they think that they're there there's something that there's going to be torment mm-hmm. and just many are just fearful and they they know they know life here they they, they know this realm they, they know these energies and they want to stay where they feel it's comfortable mm-hmm. and just as in in life people no one likes change everyone wants to stay in their own little comfort zone mm-hmm. and even though the change would make life so much better you know people don't like to change and the same thing is for entities Mm -hmm. they want to stay in their comfort zone and even if it means going into a a body of somebody that they really you know would never even when they were in in life they would never even cavort with and they go and 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 then take up with that person Mm -hmm. but it's all about the comfort zone so how is it that we can get rid of these entities many people want to do it themselves well how can they who can they ask for help to get these entities to go home and not cohabitate with them in their body first of all you have to make your your temple inhospitable to those frequencies if you remain in a frequency if your predominant frequency is of love and happiness and joy then that's what you will attract but if you allow yourself to often sink into depression and sadness and sorrow then those entities that are aligned that align with those frequencies will be attracted to you 
it's like you're you're putting out a, a, a bait, mm. and they they can't resist it, so they have to come in. Mm-hmm. And then what happens when they stay? How can we evict them? Well, sometimes you'll have to get help. Sometimes there are instances where if you raise your vibration and your frequency, they won't be able to stay. Mm -hmm. They they cannot stay because they cannot maintain, they cannot become one with that frequency. So they have to find another place and they'll leave. But they'll go to another host. They'll go to Uh, another body. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, but we want to be able to send them home. So what's the best way that we can do to send them home? Well, the best way is that you need to, well, you need to, first of all, like I said, raise your frequency, and then you need to ask for help. You want to ask for the light from the uh, higher higher frequencies. You want to ask for the Christ light, the mm-hmm. Christ frequency to come and surround that that soul, mm-hmm. and then you, if, if, if they don't leave after you've shined the light on them, you've asked them very nicely to go, you've told them that you, that you hold no malice, you know that they were just looking for a safe place to stay because they were afraid. Then after that, if they don't go, that's when you're going to have to call in reinforcements. Mm-hmm. And then that's when you're going to call for the angels. You can call for the light warriors. Mm -hmm. You can call for Archangel Michael. You can call for various angels. Mm -hmm. And you'll know because you'll feel. You'll hear it in the back of your mind. You'll hear the name to call. For some, it might be Michael. For some, it might be Raphael. If the entity is causing you sickness, you'll know, you'll know. Do we have to know about these angels before we call on them? Do we have to study about them? You know, I say that if you just say, if you pray, you know that, well, you have a feeling that uh, you may have an entity attachment. Mm -hmm. You just want to pray and then you want to ask for wisdom. If you don't know the angel's name, you're just going to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. You may ask for your higher self to guide you, and you will be guided Mm -hmm. if you are sincere. Mm -hmm. A lot of people ask me, why is it that the higher self can't take care of these entities itself? Mm. Well, the truth is that many times, you have contracted with these entities. Hmm. You've asked them to come so that you may learn a lesson, so that you may learn your lessons quick, but you may not want to go out and per se do or experience the experiences that that entity has experienced. Mm-hmm. So by that entity coming to your, your, your temple, that is a way of you being able to experience different experiences without absolutely having to fully embody that energy totally. Mm -hmm. You get a glimpse of it. You you, you may get uh, some of their inclinations here and there, but you don't have to live out the totality of their frequency. Mm -hmm. Now, Lenise works in a place where I would imagine many of the inhad the people who are there may have these entity attachments is that true absolutely Mm -hmm. so what is she doing when she comes into a place like that with her light how is that affecting them well they become agitated they become agitated but then they it's sort of like they're They, they don't understand. They, 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 they're trying to figure her out. 
they they don't understand how they've done so many things and she can still maintain that that high vibration mm -hmm. they they don't understand they they did try to run her car off the road and they did try to put sickness into her body and they often try to to do things to make her feel feel that she's not needed but her light is so necessary not just for that facility but for that area mm -hmm. she like a beacon in that area she shining her, her light yes her and there are others mm -hmm. there are others but she is like a beacon. Mm -hmm. What else do we need to tell her today? She has a lot of questions about her dreams. Um, one that just popped up here is a group of ladies who seem like angels. And they were asking her to do something. And that they, would, they needed her help. And there weren't many of them in the world. And she said no because... She was only aware of Jesus and didn't know who they were. Who were these ladies? The Palladians. Mm. Does she have anything to do with them? She does. Can you tell her about that? She spent time in that tar star system mm -hmm. many lifetimes. She was a teacher and she was one with that council. And she knows them. She went there for a blessing. And they gave it to her. And that's why she has the open door. Mm -hmm. And any time she thinks that she cannot do it, and I mean, I don't care what it is, if she thinks that she cannot change her financial picture to make it whatever she wants, if she thinks that she cannot heal, if she thinks that she cannot do anything that God has placed in her heart to do, she need only remember the blessing that was given at that meeting. She was given an impartation, an impartation of the open door, of the open door. And when the door is open, all she has to do is walk through. And I would say to all the light workers, please know that you are living in the time of the open door. And I'm telling everyone under the sound of my voice, the door is open for you. All you have to do is walk through. This is the time, the time, the time, the time when you must do what is in your heart to do. I talked about the bliss, what makes you happy, what brings you joy. I don't care what it is. It's connected to your open door. It's what you are supposed to be focusing on right now. If you are of the light, hear what I'm telling you. This is the time of the open door. You think the door is closed. And there have been many, many, many lifetimes when it has been closed and you couldn't do the things that you had in your heart to do. I'm not just talking about a whim or something you think you'd like to do. I'm talking about a heart cry, a soul purpose. You try to forget about it, but it keeps coming back. You keep thinking about it. It's something that God placed deep in the recesses of your heart. 
This is the time of the open door. Walk through. You can do it. You can do it. You think you can't. You don't have the money. You don't have the talent. You don't have the skill. But guess what? You've got the purpose. You've got a God calling to do it. Start small. Start. It doesn't have to be small. It doesn't have to be big. Start. Do a little bit of it. A little here. A little there. And we'll put energy behind it. No. You can do it because we're pushing you to do it. We're pushing you. We're pushing you because it's time for each and every one of you to stand up and be counted. You can't stand up if you're not willing, my dears, to hear what I'm telling you. There is an open door. It's a perpetual open door now. Do you hear me? Oh, you may not want to do it. You may still think, oh, I can't do it. She's just talking. But you can. You can. We're pushing you. We're pushing you. And we're going to keep saying it until you walk through. The door's open. It's been open, matter of fact, for a while now. But you still are looking back. Looking back to the past. Looking back to lifetimes when you were burned at the stake. When you were fed to the lions. Bad things happened because you spoke up. You knew the truth back then. You already knew. You know the truth again now in this lifetime. Speak up. Do what's in your heart to do. There is an open door. The way will be made. Don't worry. And so we tell her the same thing. There's an open door, a perpetual open door now. Just walk through. What do you want? What do you want to see? What do you want to create? You've already been given the green light. Your heart is pure. It's God, pur God purposed in you. These are God wishes. Is there a reason why the open door is now? Is there something yes, happening? Yes, no. yes, What's happening at this time on the earth? You know that there are many changes coming. Can you tell me about those changes? There are, are changes. Are these spiritual changes or physical changes? There are both. Mm -hmm. Spiritual. Spiritual, spiritual, spiritual. There will be a raising of the vibration of the planet. And there will be those who are of the light, who are willing to shift. They want to shift. They want to shift. They've been praying for the shift. And as well, many of you know that the whole earth has been groaning for the revelation of the sons of God. Everything is groaning, groaning, groaning for the revelation of the light. And the way is open. The way is open for you to shine. The way is open for you to be what God called you to be. What God created you to be. And that is brilliant and magnificent. And however you choose to do it, However God has purposed in you, now is the time for you to walk in that. Don't be afraid anymore. Don't be afraid. This is not a time of fear. This is a time to know that there are many, many, many helpers. Many helpers behind you. And we encourage you. We talk to you in dreams. We talk to you even uh, in your ear, we whisper here and there that you can do it. There is a way. There is a way. It's not God's will for you to live in, 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 in anger and unhappiness and turmoil. Do you think that's God's will for you? A God that is pure love, that is beauty and light. 
and everything other than that is the illusion, my dear loved ones. Please know that and align yourself with God's truth and watch your life unfold in that way. I don't care if you are surrounded by the whirlwind. In the center is peace because God is there in the center of it all and he's peace and he's joy and he's bliss and even with the whirlwind surrounding you you will be in joy and peace and bliss if you stay connected and lined up with the truth of what God is and who he is and I know that some may get offended at the word God we use so many names for 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 the source and and, and, and the Father, and the, the Creator. Call it what you will, but you know what I'm saying. Some may say God. I call Him Father. Some may say Mother. It's all the same. Now, a lot of people will say, how can we be so blissful when there's so much terror around the world? It's there's... a choice. Mm. It's a choice. Do we turn from it? Is that what we, what was meant by turn the other cheek? What is when we see that people are bombing, uh, people in our neighborhoods and killing? How how are we to react to that? First of all, you make sure that you're not bombing or killing with bad negative thoughts, mm -hmm. with bitterness, with anger, that you're not harming others, and then you say a prayer, a prayer for peace. A prayer for peace and then know that those who are are the victims and those who are the perpetrators have all signed up to play the game they knew before they came here what their roles were and what they do and who would do this and who would do that and although they've forgotten and it appears so awful and it is awful to some know that everything is unfolding perfectly everything is unfolding perfectly you don't understand although you would love to be in charge and you would love for your way to be right and you would love to think that you know everything but there is a higher knowledge and there is a higher purpose to everything and although we can always see the why we don't always understand the why of the suffering and the torment. In time we will. In time we will. And know that if you've had a time of torment and suffering, you will always, you will also have the opportunity to experience the flip side, the joy and the bliss. So please know it's just a game, dear loved ones. It's just a game. And while you're watching the news and you're, 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 you're lamenting about the loss, know that that dear soul that might have passed, that might have been killed in a terrible bombing, they cannot die. They, oh, they may leave the body, but they go back to eternal life. And after a time, many times they'll choose to come back. I know that sounds simplistic and some won't understand and I understand this and I know the suffering is great when you've lost a loved one some have lost children and they don't understand and it's only because they don't see the bigger picture that that small baby was not small at all that was a great warrior spirit who lives on in multiple dimensions and multiple realms and just came very briefly, very briefly to be loved by that family, to touch that family with joy. But unfortunately, we only see the grief. We don't see the largeness of that soul. But the truth is that that soul cannot die, it cannot die but we don't see that part of the game. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say that how can God allow all of this suffering? Well, 
you know God allows what we want to experience is that free will it is free will in a way in a way mm -hmm. but before we come to a body we decide what we'll experience we know when we'll experience we know who will, we will experience it with that one that's going to commit the terrible atrocity sits with us as a loving brother and one will say will you help me with this in this lifetime I'd like to experience a terrible car accident or I'd like to be shot will you help me experience this and then that other one will say yes now you know I don't like to really be the bad guy but I'll do it for you this time mm -hmm. and we make an agreement before we even come to the body and then when we're in the body we forget about it and then we see that terrible one that tormentor that that that, that angry person whatever and we forget that on the other side that was our loving brother and we contracted to do this in this life Lenise had a dream that she was being asked to do a job and was handed a pen it was a pen with a big pink plume dipped in ink yes that was the plume of love mm -hmm. so what why did she see for example John Kennedy and Martin Luther King and others they bought the light these were people of the light mm -hmm. who held the light in great darkness and that's what she's doing she's there in that facility with all of those dark entities and all of those dark en en energies and she does not always feel comfortable and so that's why she was reluctant of signing the contract but she signed that contract before she came here and she is doing her job and she's doing a wonderful wonderful job but she also fears that there's danger mm -hmm. yeah they these did not fare well exactly so she's in a very dangerous place day in and day yes, out but she need not fear she doesn't go in alone who goes with her we send angels so many angels go with her so many angels and she knows that she can fill them they clear the way for her so many times she also had a dream about a panel of ladies who wore white and whose skin looked slightly scaly and pale that was the Palladians the Palladians again but why is it that she felt that so that there was so much energy running through her when they raised her their hand those are the oracles hmm. can you tell me about the oracles the oracles have been in many times past there would always be an oracle on the earth there would always be an oracle on the earth she is from the lineage of the oracle she does not have the full power of the oracle in this lifetime but she has had that power in several previous lifetimes she shares it with her husband mm -hmm. and it is a powerful powerful gift that keeps you separated it's it caused her to live a life of solitude and she didn't want it in this lifetime and oh my goodness on that note I have to stop because I have to go to the bathroom all right so I'm going to touch your shoulder and you can now open your eyes and you will be back in the same place okay we'll start talking about the oracles yes there's was a time when there was always an oracle somewhere on this planet someone with clear hearing clear seeing who knew the answers mm -hmm. very connected very spiritual 
Is there someone on earth now that's an oracle? No. No? Why is that? There's one coming. Okay. There is one coming. But the powers that be, they don't want to see it happen. So what are they doing to keep that oracle from coming? Wow. They are viewing her remotely to to they cannot stop it but changing timelines changing timelines to delay because when the oracle comes that's going to be during the shift and during the split. Can you talk more about the shift and the split and the timelines? You've, yes. You've put in a, quite a few different topics in one. Well, they when the timelines have been tampered with, but of course, they cannot be tampered with permanently. Mm -hmm. Things can be changed here and there. But they can things. What's going to happen cannot be altogether stopped. But the oracle that's coming. She. She cannot be stopped. Is she coming in like a baby? Yes, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if it's going to be a girl or a boy. Mm -hmm. Right now it's female gender on the spirit side? Yes, but it actually it's, it's both. It's both. It's both. Mm -hmm. I say, say ladies, but they're actually of the El Elohim. Near Elohim? Mm -hmm. Elohim. Lineage, mm -hmm. oracle, oracles, oracles, and and they, they they they're preparing to send one of their own, one from the council. One from the council is coming, and the powers that be knows that when that one comes. It will be a sign of the the the, the end of the, the current regime of the world system. And they they know and they don't want her to come. They don't want her to come because they know that the oracles come at the time of the shift. Hmm. They know this. And that oracle will be very powerful with powers that we haven't seen in a long time. Powers to affect the weather. Powers to 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 work very easily with the elements born that way. Mm -hmm. Not coming and learning from a teacher, just born that way. And People will be afraid, afraid. That's why she didn't want any of that, anything to do with the, the oracle blessing. She didn't want anything to do with that life again because people feared her. They thought she was weird, something to be feared and afraid. That's why people keep their distance now because mm. they remember her before that she was powerful she was different many many lifetimes ago but they can see it in her energy field how does an oracle change the world by holding up the light by being a brilliant brilliant light in the world by assisting those of the light 
and by exposing darkness. This person will be a clear, clear channel. This person will have control of the elements. If this person says it's not going to rain for one year, it will not rain. If this person says there will be a tornado in Texas on Friday, there will be a tornado in Texas on Friday. This is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, can this oracle be manipulated by the darkness to be used as a not weapon? Not a chance. Not a chance. Mm -hmm. This one is coming, bo being born already knowing, still connected, mm -hmm. still connected, and oh my goodness. So how is this person going to affect the earth shift? Just helping, mm -hmm. helping Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. And then she's going to be as like a beacon and a light for those who are of the light. To know that it pays to be on the side of the light. That the light will win. That we have power. We have strength. This one will also be a teacher. And will also remind those to love Mother Earth. And to connect with the God within to know that there's God within each one of us, to seek the God presence within because that's where the power is. It's not outside for some external God, it's God within. That one will remind you of Christ in you, the hope of glory, Christ within. Now, when you say Christ, there may be people around the world that think of Christ as being Jesus. Highest energy frequency. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus was connected to, was the Christed energy, which was the energy of God within. That's why he could say, I and the Father are, are one. He knew it without a doubt because he sat with the presence of God within each of every cell. That's how he was able to heal. That's how he was able to affect the elements because he knew that God dwelt within each and every cell, every atom, every living thing here on the planet, every living thing in him, in every breath. He knew it. He connected to that presence and that presence was one with him. Have there been other others that have had this Christ? light within them absolutely absolutely we just don't call them the christ well we, we put a lot of different names on things mm -hmm. but it's all the same mm -hmm. that christ in energy that highest light and love the legitimate power that runs planets universes that the source of life that is the source of life, God's love, that highest Christ energy. Mm. Are there some now on earth that have that Christ light within them? Absolutely. Do we but know to of different any of them? degrees. Okay. But to different degrees. There's we have a right here on this planet so many who are of the light. Mm. They, they, they 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 seek the light. They love the light. They live for the light but it's to varying degrees. Okay. That's the only thing that separates. And they could do healing too. Absolutely, if mm -hmm. they so desire, absolutely. Okay. But the question is, are you connecting with the God presence within? Or are you looking for a presence without? You see, because if you're looking without, I'm sorry, beloved, it's that presence within. You're, 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 you're off track. You need to look within to find God within. God lives, dwells. He's not even a breath away. He's closer than your very breath. He's right there. He's ever present. He's, he's always right there, right here. Right here. Beautiful. Thank you. Denise tells me that she fell asleep once on the couch when she began to dream. She felt a presence behind her. 
And then she thought she's not going to fear because there's nowhere that she is that he is not. Then she saw a door opening into outer space. But then somebody came in and interrupted her. December 21st. Mm-hmm. What happened on 2012. that day? Mm-hmm. The door was open. Can you there tell is me this door, what this door was all about? The open door. That's the open door. That's what had happened? Where we're pushing, we're pushing those who love the light. Those who are of the Christ energy, we're pushing you to your purpose. We're pushing you to your purpose, to remember your purpose, and then to fall in line with what you were sent here for. That's all. Now, a lot of people who come to these sessions want to know what their purpose is. There seems to be almost like a an urgency for them to know their purpose. Why Why are all these people feeling so urgent about knowing why they're here at this time? Because on certain levels they are starting to remember that they too signed contracts. And I say contracts, it sounds so, so official. But they agreed to come here to do certain things and they're deep within the recesses of their spirits. They know that, that it's time to do something. They know the time is now. They just don't know what. But see, that too is part of the plan. That's part of the game. Mm -hmm. That they're coming to it. Yes. They will find that purpose. They will remember in time before it's too late. You see, they will remember, but it's now they're waking up, and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful because they are, they, they're, are, they're aware. They're aware that it's time to stand up. They're aware that it's time to speak. They are aware that it's time to write the book. They are aware it's time to start the blog. They're aware it's time to start the light-filled business, the light-focused business. Mm -hmm. They know, but they feel that they cannot do it, they're small, they don't have the money, they don't have the energy, they don't have this, the education. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to tell them, and I've told them so many times in their sleep time, I've whispered in their ear, and many, many, many will confirm that they've heard about the open door. Because I've told so many, the door is open, the way is clear, walk through, start it, do it, be it, have it. It's a God wish, it's a God desire. Do it. The Very door is open. She also had a dream where a huge lady about a hundred feet tall picked her up and placed her on a shelf and another entity who seemed to be female as well. The tall lady asked her, are you free? And she answered back that she was and when she woke up she knew that she had fallen asleep and worried about money and her job which always made her feel so restricted and not free. Can you interpret that dream for her? It was her higher self. Mm -hmm. The higher self is coming. Everybody's coming with the same message. The door is open. The way is clear. What do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? It is easy as deciding. We see you suffering, we see the tears, we see the anxiety, the stress, the drama, and the drama. And we're just here, just like we're sitting on the edge of our seats almost, like go, walk through it, do it, start it. Start it, start it, start it. And then, before you start it, don't doubt. Just know that we're pushing you forward. We're pushing you, we're pushing you, we're behind you, we're supporting you. Just but, a, 
But a lot of people, a lot of people feel like you're pushing them off a cliff. That there's no parachute. That there's nothing for them to catch them. That if they leave their job, if they go write their book, there's no way to pay the bills. Mm. What? Where's the parachute uh, when you push them? Well, oh, you know, that's where the faith comes in. That's mm -hmm. where the trust comes in. And always know, always know, don't look back. You're, you're, you're hesitating and you're, you're, you're thinking that it's going to be a fall from the cliff because you're looking back to those other lifetimes when the door was closed, when you were burnt at the stake, when you were fed to the lions, when you were, when you were shot, when you were this, you were that. This is a different time and the door is open. The way is open, but only for a time. Although the door is perpetually open, there's a certain amount of time that you have in this lifetime to do what you have to do in this lifetime. And so we ask you, take a step. How can we take that step with that, with that tremendous fear in our heart from all of these God other has times? not given us the spirit of fear, beloved. That's of the illusion. So how can we release ourselves from that fear? You line up with presence. First of all, you know, you know, you know, you know within every atom of your being that God is present. He's a present help. He's here right now. He's not over there. He's not out there. He's not up there. He's right here. And you sit with yourself and you say, well, God, if you're here, I need a way to pay this light bill. God, if you're here, I need a way to do this. I need a way to start this business. Give me the mental clarity. Give me the physical fortitude. Give me the, 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 the clarity, the stick to to complete this task. And it's done. It's done just like that. You live in the time where it's done. Do you hear me? It's not going to be done. It's already done. Decree it. Put your energy behind. Put your focus behind it. Do it. Be it. Have it. Just ask. Just ask. And then, but don't just ask. Take that step. And I know that's the hardest part. That's the part that everybody gets stuck on, is taking a step. And that's because you think you have to go all out. You have to do it big. You have to do it grand. No. If you don't feel that you can do it grand, just start small. Start what's, small. What's, start, write it down. Let that be the first step. Mm -hmm. You write the vision down. All right? Next step, maybe you make a, a plan to do the second step. Start small, but start, start, start. We're begging you. Very good. Thank you so much. She also had a dream where they were. Uh, she had, she was wearing some sort of an Egyptian gown and was wearing a very ornate golden headdress. And she was told that her name was Sekhmet. Can you tell her what that was all about? Yes. She was one of the Egyptian daughters in, of that time. Mm -hmm. She lived in Egypt. She had a lifetime in Egypt where she worked with alchemy. She, she worked with, with different uh, 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 alchemical things and she, she did potions and, 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 and she dealt with herbs. And she's just remembering the, the time when she was able to work with those things and she healed and she she lived the life of, of Egypt. She's lived many lives and in each life she always found a way to do something associated with healing. Uh, either as the oracle telling people how they could be healed or she worked with med medications, herbs. Uh, she, she's done all kinds of things. She's lived many lives and that's why in this lifetime she should not be afraid to take a step. She, she's already done the hard part. She's lived the hard lives. Very good. Thank you. 
She had another dream that she was an Indian woman and held the dying body of an Indian man who she now knows that was her current husband. She tried to save him in some way, but before the dream was ended, a spirit told her that horses protected her. Can you tell me a little bit about spirit animals? Yes, yes. When you're born, there is often a sign to you a special animal and it goes it's according to the star system under which you're born under the star sign it's associated is this something like the Chinese astrology or is this something else it is associated with the animal associated with that planet mm -hmm. at the time of your birth so how can we use these spirit animals to our benefit for helping well most time if you tr have a dream about an, a certain animal in your sleeping time if you dream several times of a of a dog or in your sleep time, you dreamed of could even be a turtle, or there's a, a a a feeling of protection in the dream. Mm -hmm. Then that's how you know that that animal, the spirit of that animal, and it it it, it the, the spirit of that animal, the essence of that spirit is that that energy is is needed that energy needs to be that energy needs to be increased hmm. what do you mean by that well if in the dream that the animal has to have a feeling of that it was a, a protecting spirit. It, it, it can't be negative because mm -hmm. if, if the animal comes in the dream and doesn't feel good, that's a, a foreboding. That's a warning. Okay. But if you should have a dream, like a horse in her case. Yes, but it's very obviously the horse. The horse was. She's longing for freedom, freedom mm -hmm. from drudgery. So that's why she saw the horse there in the dream. Mm -hmm. And at the time, she might have been longing for freedom from the marriage as well. That's why she had the dream. Mm -hmm. Okay. But should you dream of your spirit animal, it's just an indication that you need more of that, more of the essence of that, that what that animal represents. So, for example, if, if we were to see a cat. Yes. A cat, I would think, is independent. Yes, but cats also represent wisdom. Mm, okay. That's why they were always present in Egypt. Okay. Associated with Hathor and other Egyptian gods. They're they're wise. They they, they know. They know. They know. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you should dream of a cat, many times it's an omen that there's something you need to know. Mm, I see. There's something you need to look deeper at. And uh, you you need to bring that awareness of that you need to be aware you need to know something, but anyway, if the animal comes to you, you you want to meditate on it. If it comes in a dream, if that animal that type of animal just the thought of it pops into your mind, it might be your spirit guide popping it into your mind so you can focus on the fact that you need more of that energy, more of that essence. Of whatever that represents. Wonderful, thank you. Another dream that she had was about being a spy and helping Jewish people in some way. And she sat at a table with dangerous people. This seemed to have been in the 1800s. And um, she had a partner who seemed to have gotten drunk and revealed that they were spies and they were both killed because of this. Why did she have this dream? It was an entity. Hmm. 
an entity that had gotten killed. Okay. So it wasn't her at all? No. Okay, so she was dreaming of the entity's life? Yes. Okay. Is that entity still there? Yes. Okay. Do we need to take care of that entity today? Yes. All right. Would you allow me to do that now? Yes. Okay. Where is this entity residing at this time? In her spine. In her spine. All right. So I'd like to move my hand over her body and bring that entity up, 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 up. Good evening. Hello. Can you tell me why you're there today? Why have you not gone to the light? I don't want to. What happened to you? I was murdered. You were murdered. Mm hmm. Tell me about what caused this murder. Firing squad. Firing squad. Where were you? I was in Britain. In Britain. Mm hmm. Were you. A spy? I was a soldier. A soldier? And what happened to you? I was trying to retrieve information and I got drunk mm -hmm. and I, I I was talking and laughing with my 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 compatriot mm -hmm. and one of the other men did not like what we were saying and they took us out and we were killed we were killed for nothing how do you feel about that feel very angry. Mm -hmm. What's that anger doing to you? Is it helping you? No. What's it making you feel? It makes me feel angry that I was killed. Mm -hmm. That someone did something to you, betrayed you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you like to give me that to me? It seems to be very heavy on you. Can I take that from you? No. Why would you not want to give me that to me? Why should I have had it all this time? Why would I let it go now? Mm, it seems to be very heavy on you. It's not making you feel very good. No. No. What is your name, please? Jonathan. Jonathan. Jonathan, I want you to go back in time. And I want you to go to the last lifetime where you were with this person who killed you. I want you to be there. And tell me, who was this person in that lifetime? It was Sarah. Mm-hmm. Sarah. What did you do to her? I was betrothed to Sarah. Mm-hmm. But I didn't marry her. You betrayed her, didn't you? Yes. But not on purpose. I had to go to war mm -hmm. again. So and tell me how... That affected Sarah. You can see it as spirit. How did it affect Sarah when you betrayed her and never married her? She grew old and never married and was bitter. Bitter. And she died with that bitterness and anger. She did. Mm -hmm. So yes. can you see now, Jonathan, how she took the first opportunity to make you understand how she felt when you betrayed her? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you forgive her now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you like to give me that anger now that doesn't have any meaning for being there? Would you give that to me now? Yeah. All right, I'm going to put my hand on your chest. Give me all of that anger you've been holding for so long, knowing now that you were just playing a part, that you came here understanding that you were going to feel what Sarah felt. What you did to her, you were going to feel too. Tell me when I have it all. You have it. All right, let's take that and send it to the universe. Jonathan, what would you like to put in that space instead? Peace. 
Let's put lots of peace in there. Feel it going in. I'm going to put a fire hose of peace and love in there. Feel that love coming in. Going to every cell of your, your body, your etheric body, your astral body. Feel it going in there. Tell me how that feels. It feels good, but it feels funny. Mm -hmm. You haven't had that light in there for a long time, have you? No. All right, so as it goes in there, Jonathan, I want you to focus on that center of that light, and I'd like for you to expand that light now, making it bigger and bigger and bigger. Take that light now and expand it and tell me how you feel. I feel... Mm-hmm. What would you like to say to Lenise after all this time? I'm sorry I caused you many years of suffering. What did you make her feel all this time? I made her feel back aches. Back aches? Mm-hmm. What else? Other other pains on the side. Mm-hmm. Menstrual cramps. Mm-hmm. A lot of suffering. A lot of suffering. Would you like her to forgive you for that, Jonathan? Yeah. All right. So, Lenise, go ahead and tell Jonathan. Would you forgive him for that, not knowing any better? Yes. All right. So let me speak now with Jonathan again. Jonathan, how do you feel now that she's forgiven you for that? I feel good. I feel good. Very good. Is there any anything else that you would like to take care of today, Jonathan? Are we complete? Yes. All right, so I'd like to call in the angels of the light to come and surround you. They're going to tell you something before you go. Tell me what they've told you. They told me that I'm, that I'm of the light. Of the light also. So go ahead and start shining that light and go up through the crown of her head and go straight up to the light. Archangel Michael will escort you also. And tell me who you see there when you get there. I see, I see Gabriel. Gabriel, beautiful. What does Gabriel tell you? He said, I'm free to go. Mm. How does that make you feel? Now that you're free to go. I feel, I feel very good. Very good. Jonathan, may the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'd like Archangel Raphael now to begin healing that area where Jonathan had been residing for so long. Fill Anise with that beautiful light, that healing light. And now let me speak with Jesus again. Can you tell me how her that's affected her now? Yes. She She It's just She's just taking it all in. Mm -hmm. But as I say to everyone, these entities fear change. They fear because that was their predominant energy pattern before they left the body. So I would ask each and every one of you, in every way you can, banish fear at every turn. Here, a little riddance of fear, there a little riddance of fear. When you find yourself in fear at any time, if you can tolerate, face it. Face it and know it's just an illusion. 
Some have said false evidence appearing real. Face it. Face it. So that when you cross over, you do not cross with the predominant energy of fear. Make sure that you do not cross over and make your home in another. Banish fear, beloveds. Banish fear. Do we have any other entities? Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Can you tell me how many? Three. 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 There, there were more. Mm -hmm. There were more, but since she has been raising her vibration and frequency, those others could not tolerate to stay. Mm -hmm. But these three... She has asked them to leave. She's asked them to leave, but there must be additional help. All right, so how and can we help them today? The time had to be right mm -hmm. for her to release these ones. Is she ready to release them today? Yes. Where are they? There are two in the feet. Mm hmm. All right. So let me go down to the feet. And I'm going to tug at the feet and pull this energy up, 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 up. Oh. Who am I speaking with? Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Who else is there, Rebecca? Andrew. Are you, are you together? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Why are you together in the feet? From the facility. Mm. Did you die at the facility? We died in the area. Mm -hmm. So why didn't you both go to the light? We, we don't want to. Why is that, Rebecca? We, we like it here. Tell me what you like about being here. We know this place. Ah, so you're afraid of changing? No, we just, we just like it here. This mm. is what we want. Okay. Rebecca, would you be willing to play a little game with me today? Yes. All right. Rebecca, inside of you, there's a little light. And I want Andrew to play along, too. There's a little light inside of both of you. I want you to go ahead and see how big you can make this light. Make it as big as you. And tell me how that light feels. It feels... It feels okay. Maybe you haven't made it big enough. Keep making it bigger. Make it big, wow, big, big. that's too bright. Mm -hmm. Keep making it bigger. How does that make you feel? Afraid. What if it hurts us? Oh, it's not going to hurt you. This is pure love. Feel that light. This light is from the Creator. Yes, it feels warm. Mm-hmm. Feel the love of that light. It's yeah. pure love. Do you see, Rebecca and Andrew, that this is pure love? Yes, but that's why we're at the feet, so we don't have to see the light. Mm -hmm. But the light is where home is. I want you to go and see. I'm going to have one of the angels escort you just to the tip of the light and tell me what you see, all right? Okay. Would you be willing to do that? So I'm going to call Archangel Michael. Don't push us. No, I'm going to just have you see what's there. I don't want you to go there. You come back and report what you see. I'm going to have Archangel Michael take you by the hand and just take you just far enough for you to see what's on the other side. Okay. And tell me when you get there. What do you see, Rebecca? Oh, I see the, the light. 
It's, it's not scary. Mm-hmm. Is Andrew with you? Yes, yes, yes. How do you both feel now that you've seen? Oh. It's not scary, is it? We didn't know. Mm, of we course thought, you didn't. We thought it was going to be scary. Mm. But it's okay. It's not. So, Rebecca and Andrew, what have you been doing to Lenise all this time? We make her feet hurt and mm. burn and everything. All right. So, please go ahead and start pulling all of your energy from her feet. And I'm going to ask you to now to release and go directly into the light. Okay. May the light of the universe always accompany you both, Andrew and Rebecca. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to ask Archangel Raphael to go ahead and shine that healing light into her feet. Heal that area. And tell me when that's complete. It's complete. Very good. Tell me where the last one is. It's in her chest mm -hmm. on the left side. On the left side. All right. So let's move that energy up, 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 up. Good evening. Marvin. Marvin. How long have you been there, Marvin? Four years. Marvin, what was it that attracted you to her? I just saw her. Mm -hmm. saw her out. Mm -hmm. What made her vulnerable for you to attach to her? Worry and stress. Mm. Marvin, were you worried and stressed? Yes. What happened to you? How did you lose your body? Gang. A gang? How yeah. old are you? 28. That's pretty young to lose your body, isn't it? Yes. So what happened? I got killed in a drive-by. I lived my life in fear. Mm-hmm. Oh, by living your life in fear, that's what you attracted, didn't you, Marvin? Yes. Mm -hmm. So why are you now attached to her, her chest? Is that where you were hit? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Marvin, I want you to do something. I want you to go back in time, and I want you to go back to that time when you were shot. Where were you when you were shot? I was outside of my house. All right, so I want you to see it happening. They came, they got me. Mm -hmm. And see your body now as it lies there, as you're watching your body. Tell me when you see it. I see it, I'm down. All right, tell me how it looks. My body is just laying there, but I'm standing up. All right, so now, Marvin, I'd like for you to go ahead and begin healing that body. I can heal it. Of course, your spirit. Go ahead and heal that body and tell me how it feels when you heal it. How does your chest oh. feel? Wow, it's coming back. Mm-hmm. Feels complete, doesn't it? It does. So, Marvin, is there any need for you to be with Lenise anymore? Now that you feel whole and complete? No, I guess I can go back. Mm-hmm. But I can't go back to before. Well, you can go to the light. And the while you're light, mm -hmm. what, but what if that's boring? Ah, let's go see. Would you like to see before you go? I guess. Mm -hmm. In the light, Marvin, you can create whatever you want. If you want a boring place, you'll create one. If you want something exciting, you'll create it. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay. All right, so I'm going to have the angels of the white light surround you, and they're going to take you right to the light and tell me what you see. Archangel Michael's going to be with you. Oh, yeah. What's there? I, I see the angel strong. Mm -hmm. Strong. I see the light. Mm -hmm. there's, there's my mother. It's nice to be with your mom. Oh, yes. You like to go back see your mom? Yes, yes. Give her a big embrace. Yes. And may the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you very much, Marvin. <coughs> And now I'd like for Archangel Raphael to go ahead and fill that spot. And tell me when it's completely healed. 
is complete. Very good. Thank you very much. Are there any other entities that we need to work with today? That's it. Wonderful. I have one more question about a dream that she had. It was about being at school and they were given parts for a play and she wore all black and looked sinister and she knew that she was going to have to play a witch one more time and dreaded it. But to her surprise, she was told that she would play the part of a beauty queen this time. Why did she see that dream? We were showing her that everyone has their role to play. Everyone has their role to play. But look beyond that role. Look beyond the role and see the love behind the the unkind word. Look beyond the role and see the, the loving heart that's there behind the unkind deed. Because it is true that before every lifetime, you have all been assigned your given roles, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And when it's over, you'll go back to being who you truly, truly are. Who you don't even stop being during the game. But just know that you're, you're not the small role that you play. You're, you're not the good guy. You're not the bad guy. You're bigger than all of that. I have a question about those roles. Yes. Why, why is it that we are assigned roles? I thought we had free will. You do, uh -huh. but do. Mm -hmm. you know, for to gain the knowledge that you want to attain, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to play the bad guy. Sometimes you have to be the Hitler. Sometimes you have to be the savior. It's up to you. You choose. You accept the role or not. Very good. Do you have a message for Lenise? A final message? Shine. Shine. Don't dim your light. Don't let others' opinions of you affect what you think of yourself shine and i would say that to everyone shine your brilliant light even though you think yourself so small just a flashlight no you're a beacon be the light be love know that you're supported we're pushing you to every good blessing we're there for you we're rooting for you we're pushing you don't forget the open door Walk through the open door before it closes. It's a per per perpetual door, but knowing this lifetime, you only have so much time to do what you're given to do in this lifetime. Make this lifetime count. We're there with you. We're loving you. We're encouraging you. We're guiding you. We're leading you. Have no fear. Banish fear. Do it, be it, have it, over with you. Shine, shine. Wide awake, feeling wonderful, all over. Welcome back. Oh. How do you feel? Oh, I feel, wow. <laughs> About that uh, back thing, wow. Mm -hmm. What do you think? How does your back feel now? Uh, it feels funny. <laughs> well, you're probably vibrating from the yeah. energy that's being put in there. Wow. How about your feet? I feel good. And yeah. your chest? Oh, perfect. So how long do you think you're on this journey? Oh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. An hour and 45 minutes. Oh, wow. Amazing, huh? Yes. A lot happened. Do you remember much of it? 
Uh, I do. I remember about that open door. Please, I it's like I gotta walk the open door. So, yes. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Alba, Alba, Alba. Oh my goodness. So, how do you feel? Oh, I feel kind of. I don't know. A little funny. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh wow. What a what a journey. Yeah. Like I said, I just hear that open door. Yes. Do it, do it, we, do it. you got to do it. The yes. door is open. You've got to step through it. So how did it feel to be hypnotized? Oh, it felt very good, very relaxing, very yeah. uh, very good, very mm -hmm. nothing scary, nothing, nothing <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. And um, do you remember what you were saying or were you there while you were saying this? Uh, yes. Or, uh huh. So you were uh -huh. conscious. Yeah. You weren't sleeping. No. So no. how would you describe the experience for everybody? Oh, it's just wow. It's <laughs> it's awesome. Oh my goodness to <laughs> to to know that Jesus sat with me and spoke. Yeah. It's just very touching. And it's talked quite right. a bit. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even touch the higher self. Yes. It was like he was answering everything. And it's all, it almost seemed like all of these dreams were set up perfectly for you to ask these questions. Oh, okay. It's like every time I asked about your dream, it was a way to present the information to everybody else. Oh, okay. You'll, oh, you'll wow. hear it in the recording, but it was, it was almost like a perfect setup. So uh, how far did you travel to, to be here today? Los Angeles. All the way from Los Angeles to Miami. And uh, it was it worth the trip? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so what would you tell everybody about this experience? Oh, make an appointment. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Alba's the best. It was good. You, you liked it. I did. I Fantastic. Did. So would you, if you would like a session with me, you can go to my website, albaweinman.com. Uh, it's very easy to book an appointment. Right now, I'm booked way, way, way into the future, so you have to be a little bit patient. If you are not in Miami, you can go to my website, to the Out of Town page. There is uh, information there on how to, to uh, get on my mailing list for my newsletter, and I will be telling you where I'll be going to next. I do travel all around the world, and um, hopefully I'll be going to a city near you. So if you see your city come up, make an appointment, and uh, hopefully I'll get to meet you soon. Okay, until next time, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see each other soon. Bye. Uh.